Wait. Hi, I'm John from Proper Printing and this video will be a bit more serious because this video is about a serious upgrade. My first uh, video about 3D printing uh, was about a quick tool change which is uh, still one of my coolest upgrades uh, but it was missing uh, something. The, the problem uh, with that is uh, if you remove the, uh, the hot end uh, and you want to place uh, for example a laser engraver then uh, you have to put that hot end somewhere because it is still attached to the cables in the bottom extruder. Yeah, as you can see here, for example, it's a video by a Datalab Tech. He used my quick tool change. Uh, thanks for that. It's uh, very cool to uh, to see that uh, thing in action. Yeah, if I run the video, then you can see that it he places it uh, here on the back and places the laser engraver. But it, yeah, you have to put it somewhere. And it's always attached. What I would really like is that uh, the hot end is easy to remove um, and for example uh, how the Ultimaker uh, does it. Yeah, print core waxen aber natürlich. Okay, as you can see the Ultimaker has a, a print core which can be removed easily just completely with uh, the hot end and uh, everything and it's uh, connected on, uh, on the back with uh, a couple of uh, connections. It's very cool if you can replace the whole unit. Um, so that is what I've designed. This uh, this fits my uh, the quick tool change. I'll place uh, a link in the description of that video. And um, if you want to use this, then you have to use that quick tool change. Yeah, in this video I will show you how I make a swappable nozzle. And first some coffee. Okay. Before we continue, I have to say this. Um, if you want to um, make this upgrade yourself, be aware that this is uh, a difficult to uh, reverse action. So, um, yeah, there is a possibility that you uh, that you destroy your printer. <laughs> so, yeah, don't hold me responsible if you destroy your printer. Before cutting your wires, uh, make sure that you have printed everything. Um, yeah, it kind of speaks for itself, but uh, if you haven't printed everything and you have cut your wires, good luck printing everything. I can imagine that you will not go through all of this uh, trouble. Uh, so if you don't want to and you still want this upgrade, I am thinking of uh, selling this as a set on my website, so you can easily uh, replace uh, this without the risk of destroying your printer. So if you are interested then uh, leave a comment. If you want this then yeah I will definitely find out if I can uh, can sell this. Yeah this is the original holder. Um, I've used this in my first video. I used this design and uh, made a mounting mechanism here for a D-SUP connector. You're probably familiar with this connector. Uh, if you search uh, the sub connector and go to the images, then if you don't know the name, you know its shape. Another thing that's less common is the mixed D sub connector. Mixed. Um, with a mix D sub connector you have uh, one or more larger uh, holes yeah, and these large holes can uh, can be used for uh, for thick terminals uh, which can cope with uh, a lot of more power uh, or uh, coaxial or pneumatics. And that last one uh, got me thinking. Your Bowden extruder looks a lot like pneumatics. So I've bought this D sub connector with a uh, hole in the, in the center and thought maybe I can use this to 
to connect and disconnect the uh, the bodem uh, the bodem tube. So that is what I'm going to do. The hole in this uh, this sub connector is larger than the diameter of your the outer diameter of your bodem tube. So I have printed these very tiny colors. This is uh, definitely the smallest print I've ever designed. It's uh, so small that you uh, you're getting an auto scale option. It appears to be extremely small and maybe an in inches format. <laughs> inches. Would you like to automatically scale to millimeter format? No. Um, everything looks fine, but if you zoom in, then you can see that this is uh, not so clean. Um, if you go to the advanced tab and uh, you can go to thin wall behavior and enable allow single extrusion walls that looks a lot better yeah i'm going to uh, to connect everything according to these schematics uh, the heater and the thermistor they aren't polarized so it doesn't care how you connect them um, for the fan uh, they are and the cold end fan has a yellow and blue uh, colors uh, in my case that's the default one but if you want to use another fan this could just as well be uh, red and black uh, I first wanted to uh, to use this heater uh, in pairs but uh, the heater is um, well maximum what I found was 40 watts uh, at 12 volts that's uh, a little less than three and a half amps these connectors can uh, can handle five uh, amps so that's uh, that's enough. So there are two connections uh, which are spare. I think I can use them for active bed leveling. I have printed three versions. Um, one is just like my first one, uh, which are, are with uh, smaller holes. Uh, you can tap them uh, yourself. If you have a strong material, then um, yeah, I've printed this one out of nylon with tapped holes and printed a lot with it already and haven't had any problems. I also uh, made one uh, with uh, in which you can place some uh, some nuts. If you're using the one with nuts then be aware that the screws uh, which are holding your hot end must be a bit longer than the normal. Uh, I recommend 20 millimeters. And last, you've already seen it, the one with uh, the brass inserts. Um, I'm very fond of this one because it looks awesome and this is strong and you can just use the uh, the ordinary uh, the ordinary screws. I think this is the best option but you yeah you have to get these uh, inserts. I've placed them all three on Thingiverse and it's up to you which one you want to use. There's no way back now. This should work otherwise I'm uh, what can go wrong? Let's uh, set everything up for this very cool sliding time lapse. Super cool, it's a nice, small, complete package. And now I'm going to make the 
mill side with uh, well, with this cable and um, connect all these wires to it. I will not uh, make a time lapse of this because well, it speaks for itself. Just connect it like uh, like the schematics. All right. Let's see if it if it works. I haven't done this before, so uh, I really don't know. Uh, the printer might be as well dead. So yeah, let's find out. Voltje. I'm not a smoker. Okay, let's uh, get some air into this room. <laughs> All right, this time for real. I still don't know if it works or not. Place the cable. Now the extruder. And connect this. Still have to get other bolts that these can be screwed in, so it will definitely stay at its place because the risk is now too high that it com comes loose while printing. I think I'll just start with uh, with nylon because if that works, then everything will probably work, uh, and there's still nylon left in uh, in the hot end. The filament is in. I turn on the machine. Let's see if the fan is running. And if I can read out the temperature, and if that works, then uh, yeah, I will heat it up to 250 degrees and see if it still holds. So here we go. Now the fan is running. Good sign. Yeah, my fan in the uh, in the reality is uh, re resonating, but that will uh, be over in. Uh, in a couple of seconds. Let's connect the print. The tool is showing 18 degrees. <laughs> it looks very promising. Next step, turning on the heater and see what it does. And the temperature is going up. <laughs> All right, it's at 250 degrees. See if it extrudes some material. Hmm. <laughs> There's a tricky bit. This connector will come off if you extrude through it. That of course makes sense. <laughs> I have found uh, some of these uh, screws from an old uh, PCBA that I definitely not going to use anymore. I had it lying around, so maybe you also have uh, these kind of uh, things like an old video card or old laptop, you name it, uh, lying somewhere you can just uh, unscrew these and use them. There is one, uh, well not, not a problem, but something you have to uh, keep in mind, that uh, I use these uh, M3 inserts and these kind of things have uh, got a different uh, thread. I think it's uh, yeah, some sort of imperial thread. You have to look it up. You can uh, screw them in. Um, what it does, it uh, it will lock. So yeah, I think that's uh, that, that should do. And maybe that's uh, a fortunate uh, thing. So I'll replace it again with the connector and um, this time screw it on, alright, I'm turning the printer on, heat it up again to 250 degrees and after that I will print uh, another of these uh, hot end holders uh, because I have uh, still my uh, my old hot end uh, left. It came out like this and that's, um, yeah, it's maybe even better than before. It's it's just perfect, so this works. I've intentionally placed a the female version on this side because um, 
if you have a, a regular D sub connector, then the female version can be placed into the male version of the mixed uh, D sub connector and not the other way around. So, uh, and now you're asking uh, why would you want uh, just a regular D sub connector? Now you can use that for. Uh, for adding uh, the laser engraver to your printer and you don't have to uh, put an extra wire on your motherboard yeah as i have uh, mentioned earlier uh, i'm thinking of uh, selling this as a as a set on my uh, my website because yeah it it is a tricky upgrade uh, if you mess it up then yeah <laughs> you have to repair your printer yeah i still have to to figure out um, how i'm going to to do this um, and it depends if uh, if any one of you guys are interested. All right, I think that's it. If you have enjoyed this, then uh, please subscribe uh, and like this video. Um, I will place all the files on uh, on Thingiverse, of course, so you can download it yourself. Um, if you have any questions uh, about this, then uh, you can always leave a, a message in the comment section or uh, contact me through my website, which is uh, properprinting.pro. Well, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Ciao. Or bye. Or uh, doei.